Hello there, this video is made in collaboration with Simply. It's not a paid video, but they did provide me uh, with a very important product for the future of my data archiving. This channel is now pretty old in, in the grand scheme of YouTube. It's, it's getting up there. Um, at the time of this video, we've been doing it about 12 years. And in said 12 years, we've shot a lot of stuff. In that time, we haven't necessarily made as many videos as a lot of the channels on YouTube, but we have shot a lot of data. And since 2010, we've used a fair amount of phantoms. And as time has gone on, those phantoms have received significant upgrades in throughput. Basically, how many pictures can it take in a second? And the current figure is lots. The TMX camera we've started using recently can take 82,000 pictures a second in a 720p frame. And when I've lowered that resolution just slightly to achieve 90,000 frames a second, which is my favorite figure of one second stretched to an hour long, the camera will use approximately one gigabyte of storage for every thousand frames it takes, which is 90 gigs per second, give or take. And when I'm shooting these one second equals an hour of slow-mo videos, I'm often keeping an entire hour, even if I only play a small part. So after these filming sessions, I'm left with an absolute wedge of data to deal with. Up until this point, all of our data has been stored on hard drives. There is something quite terrifying about turning on a 12 year old drive. You, you never know if you're gonna get that clicking or it won't mount or you need to plug it in and you realize you don't have a Firewire 400 cable anymore. You end up ripping that thing out of an enclosure to put it in one of these docks and then you realize, oh, it's like an IDE connection, not a SATA connection. Very often in our videos, I'll throw back to a much older video. And I always like to go back to the raw file I've kept all the RAWs on everything I've ever shot. Chances are my 1080p exports from 2010 are a bit mucky in terms of the quality. So I like to always find the original file. And up until I had the help of much larger storage servers with much newer drives, the only way for me to find these RAWs was to rummage through my shelves and find the file on whatever drive I happened to leave it on. And chances are that drive hasn't been turned on since the day I filled it. And thankfully I've never lost a file that I've shot, but there is always this wall of how long will these drives last? How reliable are these drives when we're looking, you know, 10, 20 years down the road? And that's where Simply have come in to provide me a much more convenient and much more reliable long-term storage solution. It's an LTO drive. It's actually a tape format. This video is actually a collaboration of three different companies. You've got Simply who have provided the DIT LTO drive. That's where I put the tapes. Yo Yotta who provided the software that I can use with this drive and IBM providing the tapes themselves. They look like this, very neat. I've been given 45 LTO9 tapes. The capacity of an LTO9 tape is 18 terabytes. So much smaller than a hard drive, but can store about as much as the largest capacity hard drive of the present, which I think is around 20. They've all been pre-barcoded for my use. As you can see, this is 005, the fifth tape that I filled. I have 45 of these 18 terabyte tapes. So that means I can store everything that I've shot so far for the channel and hopefully everything for years to come on these tapes. And that will give me massive peace of mind knowing that not only is everything safe and secure for an extended period of time, but it's all in the same format and I only need one device to access all of it. When I eventually fill the final tape, I can easily just get more tapes and just continue on. The tapes themselves are actually the cheapest part of this entire solution. So here's the procedure. In Yoyota, I've told the software that I want to back up this folder called Reality. It's currently spread across four tapes. As you can see in the top right, over 62,000 files have been copied to tape, but I've added to that folder since, and there's now over a thousand files not on tape. The software tells me that the last tape I used was 0004, so I can pop that tape back in. It'll tell me how much room is left on it. That tape is now mounted, and I can see that there are 6,000 odd files on this tape specifically. So when I start the job, the software will put on all the files not yet backed up to tape onto the latest tape. You can see here that we're about to copy 1.9 terabytes to tape four, where there is just over 6.6 .6 terabytes free. So all this will fit, no problem. If the tape fills, pop it out, put in the next tape, and the backup will continue across several tapes. The DIT LTO is a Thunderbolt drive, so I can attach it to my Mac via Thunderbolt for the fastest possible speed. When the tape goes into the machine, it will basically spin the tape on to the point where it can write fresh data. Once it's there, the copy begins. 
This drive's top speed is around 300 megabytes per second, almost two and a half gigabits. Shockingly, this is actually about three times faster than the time it takes to copy to a single hard drive. This is the half height drive, but there is a full height one which can manage 400 megabytes a second. Once all the files are on the tape, the software will then go through everything it's copied, making sure the checksum checks out and that all your files are correctly backed up. And to me, one of the biggest benefits of this storage solution is how much physical space it won't take up. 860 terabytes on tape is so much smaller and lighter than spinning hard drives. I've moved quite a lot in my life, and at one point I made the, the huge move of switching countries about a decade ago, and I had so much data on so many drives even at that point, it took me so many trips to move all of my drives because I didn't have the confidence to throw 20 or so hard drives into a bag and just have it as check luggage on a flight. I thought that would all be trashed. I was so paranoid about losing stuff. Whereas with these, I'd be more than happy to throw all 860 terabytes into my hand luggage where they can be sort of rocked around and I wouldn't be too worried about the preservation of the data. I don't think they'd be happy about 860 terabytes of hard drives in my hand luggage. You can read horror stories about how, say the BBC back in the day just would air something, it would be shot live, it would be aired and it wouldn't be recorded or they would record it air it and then destroy it because it would already come out. It was, it was so short-sighted to not see that, you know, syndication could be a thing or home video would eventually be invented. Someone was just like, ah, that came out, get rid. And I just think it's so sad that, I think at one point over a hundred episodes of Doctor Who were missing. It seems crazy now to think of, you know, one of the most popular shows. Spent all that time and money on them and then didn't keep them. A couple of other points of peace of mind is that an LTO tape has a guaranteed 30 year shelf life, doesn't require constant power like a hard drive does, and tape isn't susceptible to bit rot like a hard drive is. So much less worry about corruption of files. And because of that, if I ever did another large project similar to the YouTube originals we did where I was out of state for three months or out of the country for Planet Slow Mo, I, I would definitely use this system. I would take this drive, I would take tapes and that would be what I travel with instead of a mountain of raids. Because of this system, I could easily be dumping footage to the SSDs, backing up to tapes, even overnight and verifying. And that's why this device is actually pretty perfect for that job. That's why it's called the DIT. Uh, DIT was actually my entry position in the film industry before I became more of a phantom operator or like a 3D phantom operator. Getting hold of all the footage after those YouTube originals last time was a real pain. It, was, it wasn't something I could quickly grab. I'm very excited that this system is now in place and it definitely came in at the right time as a lot of my older data is, well, exactly that. It's getting on a bit. It's getting pretty old. So big old thanks to Simply, Yoyota and IBM for supplying all the goods in this video and fixing a problem that's been building over the last 10 years and hopefully making the next 10 years much more bearable. If you're thinking about getting into LTO backups and you fancy a DIT LTO yourself, Simply have provided us with a 5% discount across all their products on gosimply.com. Just use the code SLOMO5. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out the main channel to see what we've been up to there and I'll see you next time.